Peter made reference to the fact that Jimmy Lee, uh, the late Jimmy Lee of J.P. Morgan Chase, was an important advisor to this film. And I want to start there because we're in a room full of bankers and investors and people who toil on Wall Street every day. You guys have probably seen some pretty negative images of yourselves on television and film. You actually sought out the perspectives of Wall Street as you were developing the script for this movie. Alicia, talk a little bit about that process. What made you decide to go to the source? I think, you know, speaking to a group of people in this industry, I, I love going to the source. I think that is the most fun thing as an actor, is get as close to the source as you possibly can always. Um, and what we found, you know, Sarah can talk a little bit more specifically about talking to Jimmy, but what we found was amazing. The stories we heard from women, um, and very specific stories, there was nothing else we needed. Like, to, to really be able to talk to the women going through it was extraordinary. Uh, Sarah, you have a, a personal connection to Jimmy Lee. You yes. both are graduates of the same university. Yes. And, uh, you know, he spoke, I had the great pleasure of talking to Jimmy a little bit about this film um, and, and his involvement. And, and he, um, you know, he expressed a real interest in not only making sure that the film accurately portrayed Wall Street, um, but he helped put you in touch with some of the women that Alicia mentioned, that you know, he really wanted to make sure that the women's perspective was portrayed in addition to making sure that it was technically accurate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Jimmy Lee was a mentor uh, to many women on Wall Street, and it was really important to him that the story about women working on Wall Street uh, was told accurately. So uh, he was one of the first people uh, we spoke with uh, and told us his stories also as a male working on Wall Street, because there are lots of men in this movie, too. And we, we interviewed both men and women on the street. But also, he specifically connected us uh, with senior women at J.P. Morgan, at, at, all, at all the major banks. And, and hearing their stories and hearing why there aren't more women in, in specifically senior positions. Because what we learned is it's 50-50 out of college or graduate school, but then as you move up uh, in the investment world, the senior positions tend to be more male. Um, so this is essentially a workplace drama, and it's a little bit of a, it's a thriller. Um, why pick Wall Street as the workplace? Why not a pharmaceutical company or a media company? What was it about Wall Street? and? You set out to do a film with a female protagonist. What, in, what drew you to the street? I think one of the things that we're very excited about is to do the first of things. And we've, we've seen so many Wall Street movies, and they're always outrageously entertaining and really fun, and people love them. And they all make money. And they, <laughs> and they all make True. money. <laughs> and yet we've never seen a woman in this world. They're all hookers or wives or secretaries. And that's kind of gross, right? Like, let's be honest, it's 2015. Let's look at what we can, what we can do and how we can incite change in the world through media. Like, that's what's always super exciting to me is when we show things differently, we create change. And there's just a second angle to that. In addition to the female angle, it's wanting to tell a, st a side of Wall Street we haven't seen before. So in a lot of the films we've seen, a la The Wolf of Wall Street, um, Wall Street is generically evil. Uh, on a personal level, my husband works on Wall Street. Um, he was at Lehman, and now he's at J.P. Morgan. And I've always been fascinated with all the Wall Streeters I meet, and none of them are the ones I see in movies. And so obviously, this is a movie. There have to be bad guys, and illegal things ha have to happen, or there's no film. But it was really important to us that through these interviews, we tell a real story about real Wall Streeters and that not all of them are evil. So there's not as much sex, drugs, and rock and roll, That's true. but it's still a sexy movie. <laughs> and, um, and it's also, we have not seen a post-2008 Wall Street. We've not seen how social media impacts mm -hmm. Wall Street. And that was a really important story to us to tell. You know, one of the things for me personally about that is to think about Facebook and the value of Facebook and Twitter and all of these social media companies and how they've affected the markets and yet so differently than sugar or pork bellies of our grandparents' times that are very tangible, gold. Um, it's a very different market, this very ephemeral thing, and that's fascinating to me. 
And so talk a little bit about um, how you balance that desire to have a sexy movie for it to be entertaining with what sounds like a real commitment to accuracy and to making sure that it felt like true, so the people in this room would go to the movie and say, not say, oh, they totally don't understand IPOs. That's a great question. I think a lot, you know, first of all, I would say our writer is a genius and amazing. Amy Fox is, is just outrageously talented. And we kept on throwing at her, like, these are the facts that have to go in. And these are the stories, like these amazing stories we would hear from women and, we, and men. And we really wanted them in there. And yet, make it entertaining, go. Um, <laughs> and we, it was so important that we balance that. And I would say one of, one of the characters is a US attorney and who's sort of trying to get the bad guys, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that's the part that makes it more of a thriller mm -hmm. as opposed to the facts of the IPO that mm -hmm. are so authentic. What would you say? I agree. I, I, the only thing I would add is it, it's it's a very much a house of cards for Wall mm. Street. So one of the part of the tension is the politics: who gets paid, what, who gets promoted, and that that is very real in any work environment. And we do not sugarcoat that. See, I thought you were going to say it was an orange is the new black for Wall Street. Ah. <laughs> Nope. nope. There's not nope. so much diversity. <laughs> There's not so much diversity in that. You know, it's so funny. You will watch this movie yeah. and you will not know it's a women's movie at all because there's still so many men in that world. We mm -hmm. just happen to have a female lead, which you've never seen. And let's talk a little bit about all the women who worked on this. Obviously, two female executive producers. You mentioned Amy Fox, your screenwriter, female, female director. Yeah. yeah. Mira Menon, she won the Nora Ephron Prize at the Tribeca Film Festival. She's extraordinary. She was just named like one of the 35 women under 35 to watch in Hollywood. Um, How important was it for you? Did you set out to oh, yeah. employ like, a lot of women? We interviewed like, I want to say, 40 or 50 women and two men for, direct, for the director jobs. Um, you know, we, we wanted to give men a chance, but, but it was a real priority to put our money where our mouth was and, and, and hire a woman. Yeah. Um, other things we did, we hired a female sound person, which is not necessarily, there tend to be more male. Mm -hmm. um, female production designer, female costume designer. Um, we have, with, in the edit room, we, we balanced it out. We have a, a male editor, but a female assistant, because we wanted both, mm -hmm. both eyes. And then another thing we did is, because this is a Wall Street movie, and let's be honest, there's a lot of men in a Wall Street movie, when we looked at every other role outside of the Wall Street world, so the, there's a doctor, there's a, a lawyer, all the lawyers all, are women. they're all women. And so, and this is something that's not done in TV because, you know, if you watch your average TV show, there are a couple women and a ton of men. Um, and so we really wanted to make the film more 50-50. How have your own experiences in Hollywood and in entertainment shaped your perspectives. I mean, Wall Street gets a bad rap, deservedly so in many cases, for not being hospitable for women, but Hollywood's not that much better. Not any better. You go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, no yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, um, no. You know, again, I love to be, to create change. So the Gina Davis Institute has, is one of our partners, and, and we love what they do, and their work is research-based. So they've done the research to really look at how many women are in media, and the numbers are appalling. Um, and we want to be part of that change. Um, there is, I don't know if you've been reading in the news about the, the case with the ACLU about women in Hollywood. Um, so yes, there obviously is a lot of growth, but we want to be part of that forward motion. Mm -hmm. I think you said it perfectly. I mean, And um, we're going to go to the audience for questions in just a few minutes, and I would love to hear feedback and perspectives from, from people in the room as well. Um, you, both, you met working on a play together, mm -hmm. um, and then you, um, you've co-produced a few things together. Talk a little bit about your working relationship and your friendship, because it seems like you know, you literally are finishing each other's sentences and, and answering questions on the other's behalf. Um, what is that like? And, and do you think there is anything about your collaboration that, um, again, comes from that sort of shared set of experiences of, of coming of age and, and coming up in, in, in Hollywood together? 
Well, I think Alicia and I, first of all, we're married. I mean, we're not married, but like we see each other more than either of us see our spouses, who we have amazing spouses, by the way. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them. But I think it's really important for, for women to help women and women to work together as women. And, and Alicia and I have a shared sense of um, what we like. We have the same taste and we both have the same work ethic. So while we may not, nobody in business agrees on 100% on every decision, but we have a way of communicating so that we respect each other and uh, ultimately, I believe, make each other better by balancing, you know. Yeah, and, and to what you said as well, I, I will say Sarah, more than anyone I've ever met, gets things done. And in our industry, there are a lot of people who talk about things. There are a lot of creatives who have great ideas and never quite cross the fi finish line with it. And um, I so admire and respect her ability to get things done in a way that a lot of people simply aren't able to do. Do we have any questions from the audience? Anybody want to ask a question of Alicia or Sarah? We've got one in the back. Can we, do we have a mic runner? Thank you. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, having spent over 20 years on Wall Street and being the father of three daughters, I can't support your movement more than, than, than I am now, clearly. Who's going to be the lead? Oh, it's closer? shot. So the film is yeah. done. Oh, it is. It's okay. in post-production right now. Um, Anna Gunn, who, uh, uh, who is, if anyone watched Breaking Bad, she was the lead female on that show. She's won two Emmys. Uh, and James Purefoy from Rome and the Following is the sexy male lead. Uh, and Alicia and I both have roles in the film. Um, and we have some other fantastic we have a phenomenal actors. Cast. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Other questions? What did you guys change in the script as a result of your research? Were there any things or preconceived notions that you had going in that you said, you know, this is the way it's going to be, and then as a result of a conversation with, and we should talk about some of the other terrific people that helped advise you on the film. Barbara Byrne mm -hmm. um, from uh, Bank of America was an advisor. Candy Straight. She's a co-producer. Co-producer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of these women also um, helped financially. Uh, it's an independent yeah. film. Um, but did you hear anything on the street that made you rethink either a plot line or a key scene? Well, I, I will say early, early on, mm -hmm. before we even wrote it, we were in conversation with someone who is a consultant for women in business, and she goes around to places like Deloitte and helps them keep women in the workforce. And when we were talking about doing this, and she said, well, it's really important that women help each other and that they don't you know, ever backstab or anything like that. And we were like, okay, it's going to be really, really hard to make movie. a dramatic <laughs> movie when everybody's just nice to each other, but okay. And then six months later, she came back to us and she's like, my, like I am the mentee of someone and my mentor just totally effed me over. Um, go make the movie you want to make. Um, <laughs> and that was a really interesting moment because... The truth is, sometimes people aren't very nice. And business is tough. And business is tough, mm -hmm. and that makes great movies. So we got to tell that movie. And we did change the ending. I mean, I, I can't tell you the ending, but we did tweak the ending because yeah. a lot of the feedback to our original ending was uh, just not, not as accurate as we wanted it to be. And we did, um, we learned along the way that there really are some great male mentors in addition and we actually have a character in the movie who knows if he'll be in the final cut but we shot a male mentor with our lead on a golf course because we thought it was really important that there are men who help bring women up and to, and to show that. 